Welcome back to Inside Out Precision. Um, I know I've been on a little bit of a hiatus. I missed the last two weeks with videos, but uh, it's elk season. And whenever I get a chance, I've been out of town elk hunting. Um, had a lot of close calls. It's been really fun so far. So i uh, got three more days to make it happen. So I'm gonna leave tomorrow morning, head out of town, and uh, yeah, live off my back for three days and try to kill a bull. Um, so got a cool video today on veins. Um, I know there's a million different options out there, but before we get into that, I want to mention the merchandise website. So insideoutprecision.com. Uh, if you head over there, there's all sorts of t-shirts, hoodies, hats, um, stickers, mugs, like a lot of different merchandise you guys can, can purchase. Um, it's all really nice quality stuff and it helps support the channel, which helps us bring you more content. Um, so head on over to insideoutprecision.com and pick yourself up some swag. Um, so getting into today's video, we're gonna be discussing not just different shapes of veins, but also different stiffnesses of veins um, and kind of what the benefits of those are. So we're gonna start with the most common vein there is. You know, this is the blazer vein that boning makes. Um, you're gonna see this like almost every arrow that comes fletched from the factory um, is going to be fletched with a blazer vein. Uh, these came out gosh, in the early 2000s. Um, and they're fairly, they're short, they're just over two inches long, um, but they're also fairly high profile. Profile, They're 0.85 inches uh, tall. Now, when it comes to length and profile, you know, obviously the, the higher profile and longer the vein, the more drag it's going to create, thus help steer that arrow a little better. Um, but there is such a thing as, as overkill. You know, if you get a really long, um, tall vein, A, they're gonna be really noisy um, and they're gonna slow your arrow down significantly. Um, that's why you see like indoor arrows, those big indoor arrows, guys shoot, you know, really soft, like four or five inch veins or feathers um, because you're shooting one distance, you don't care, uh, it's a heavy arrow, you want it to stabilize quickly and you don't care about noise or anything like that. Um, so the blazer veins are, I wouldn't say they're a soft material, but they're definitely not a stiff material. Um, they're not the quietest vein in the world. Uh, they're, you know, you can, you can hear them during flight. Um, and if we can hear them, I guarantee you deer can hear them. Now, how much that matters, I'm not totally sure. I think deer, when they jump the string, it's usually the bow that they're hearing, not the arrow through the air. Um, but it is something to consider. So, you know, they make this same vein, Easton makes it, or well, Boning and Easton teamed up on it. And this is the, the it's called the bully vein. Um, so focus on that. Yeah, so this is the bully vein. It's the same profile as a blazer, but it is a much stiffer material. Um, and they are significantly quieter. And on top of being quieter, where that stiffer material really comes into play is um, keeping up your speed downrange. Now, I'm not saying it's gonna keep you up, you know, 14, 15 feet a second faster. Um, but when you get out past that, you know, 40, 35, 40, 50 yard mark, um, these stiffer material veins do a much better job at maintaining speed. And that's because a softer vein, you know, if you watch on slow motion, Levi Morgan actually has a pretty cool video on this. Um, you know, you'll see, you'll see the vein kind of bend over like that. Um, so that again, cr catches more wind, slows the arrow down and makes more noise. So the stiffer vein is going to alleviate that. Um, the reason you don't see just like rigid plastic veins is because of the weight. So generally speaking, the softer the material, the lighter the vein will be. Um, but in the last few years with the innovation of some of these different plastics, they've been able to get a really stiff vein that is still lightweight. You know, I don't, I don't want a vein that weighs, you know, 18 grains per vein on the back of my arrow. I still want to keep that back of the arrow as light as I can. Um, so again, that's your, you know, classic blazer vein and then the bully, um, same profile, almost identical, but uh, my boss is shooting these bully veins and he said when he got home after fletching, you know, up a dozen arrows with him, he was shooting at 50 yards and he was hitting about six inches high at 50. So that's a pretty significant amount of speed that you're picking up there, you know, probably seven, six, seven feet a second at least. Um, so something to consider there. Um, so moving on to the next vein here, you know, so we're kind of going shapes and, and stiffnesses here. Uh, this is the AAE. This is the hybrid 26. Um, super, super popular vein. Let's see if I can focus on that. You know, they have the Max Stealth Series and then the Hybrid. 
Um, the Max Stealth and the Hybrid 26 are nearly identical in profile, but with the Max Stealths or any of the Max Series veins, you have to prep the vein with the primer pen or they will not stick. All the glue will stick to the arrow, nothing will stick to the vein, and they will just fall off. Um, on the Hybrid Series, you do not need to prep the vein with that, uh, that primer pen, so that's, that's pretty nice. Um, so you'll notice this is a little bit different. It's, it's still fairly high profile, um, not quite as high profile as the Blazer, uh, but because it's not as high profile, they elongate the vein. So again, this is about creating drag. Um, the lower the profile of the vein, generally speaking, the longer, the more vein you need in order to steer that arrow as well. Um, I really like these veins. I shot these veins for a long time, um, but they are even softer than the Blazers. They are a very soft vein. They do make some noise. And one thing that just kind of drove me crazy about them was it seemed like, you know, if you were shooting groups, even at distance, like 50, 60 yards, if you even just touch the back of this vein with, with either another vein or a field tip or whatever, it it tears the vein, it puts a hole in the vein, um, it ruins the vein, and then you have to refletch that arrow. Um, so I like them, but they are pretty fragile. You know, AAE has a, a lot of different shapes and sizes, but this is definitely the most popular. Um, you know, Cam Haynes, this is actually one of his veins, the Keep Hammering veins. Um, he shoots these, he really likes them. You know, we do a lot in three fletch, a lot in four fletch. In my opinion, you know, unless you're shooting really heavy poundage with a heavy arrow, um, the three fletch does plenty, plenty good in terms of steering that arrow and being accurate. Um, so if they could make this lighter, or excuse me, stiffer, I think it would be a great vein, um, but they do have quite, they're not as loud as a blazer, but they are fairly noisy still. Um, they have the hybrid 23s as well, which is, it's the same shape, it's literally just smaller. So it's, um, 2.3 inches instead of 2.6 inches or something like that. So it's it's a little bit smaller, a little lower profile. If you're gonna shoot those with a fixed blade, you pretty much have to go four fletch because they're so much such lower profile and shorter. You need that extra vein to get the the drag and the steering that you want. Um, so those are the hybrids. And now on to my personal favorite vein and one that I think you're gonna see a lot, a lot more of. Uh, this is the TAC driver from TAC Veins. So Levi Morgan, you know, this he teamed up with them. Um, this is kind of his baby. And they spent like two, two and a half years developing a material that was super lightweight and still very stiff. And this is, without a doubt, the stiffest vein on the market. I mean, it's, it's, it almost feels like a piece of like hard plastic, but it still has, you know, it's still malleable. It's not, it's not, you know, it doesn't make any noise or anything. It's not like a, it's not rigid but it's very stiff, it's very quiet. Um, so this is the 2.75. Um, it steered my, anything's gonna steer a mechanical, but it still steered my mechanical and my fixed blade extremely, extremely well. And it's noticeably quieter. Like when you're shooting, especially at distance, you can kind of hear those arrows like down range. You barely hear this thing coming. Um, you know, it's got kind of this, this shield cut shape to it. Um, and obviously Levi Morgan, you know, he's world, how many time world champion archer, like 13 time. Um, he knows what he's looking for in a vein. And again, when it comes to that speed down range, whether you're shooting 3D or hunting, you know, if I, I wanna believe that I'm gonna be able to have time to range every animal that walks in. Um, and, and maybe even if I do, let's say I range him and he's 45 and then he takes, you know, five or six steps following a cow or something. And I think he's 45, but he's actually 48. That that few extra feet per second is going to allow allow you to get away with more that arrow is going to drop less in those extra three or four yards which in hunting can be the difference between you know a lethal hit and a long night of tracking and in 3d it could be the difference between you know catching the scoring ring or shooting an eight um, so being able to keep that speed up down range is really important and then they are much quieter and this again this all comes down to the drag you know a softer vein is going to fold over more when you shoot it um, and that's gonna create noise as well as slow your arrow down a lot more. So if you look at tax veins, they've got a bunch of different um, shapes and, and sizes. This is definitely the most popular. Uh, on my, the arrows that I'm shooting out on my PSE, it's the same vein, but it's the two inch version. Um, and I shot them down at the Total Archery Challenge and they were, they were awesome. I shot TAC at TAC and they were, they were great. Um, another thing I've noticed is 
if you're shooting an old target, you know, and you, you shoot and like, here's the target, if your veins bury up into it, these don't hold memory nearly as bad. They won't get all crinkled up. Um, you can actually take like a hairdryer to these or hold them over like some steaming, like boiling water in the steam and they'll, they'll come right back to life. Um, which the AAEs are really bad about that. I've noticed if they, you know, if they go through and they sit there for two minutes while you're scoring, when you pull them out, there's this horrible wave in the front and you pretty much just got to put that arrow in the back of your quiver and not shoot it anymore. Um, so I hope that gives you a little bit of insight as to, you know, the different shapes and sizes. You know, if you're just shooting field points, low profile, short veins are great. If you're shooting broadheads, you want to either short but high profile or a little bit lower profile but longer because you need that drag to steer it. Um, and then I think you're going to see a lot more people switching to these stiffer veins like the bullies and the tacks. Um, these are without a doubt the, the stiffest two that I have found. The tacks are definitely even stiffer than these bullies. Um, and I believe if you're a fan of the blazer shape and they've always shot well for you, I believe tack makes a vein in this very similar to this um, profile. So um, if you hop on like Lancaster Archery, they've got a huge selection of them on there. They carry all of them and you can kind of look um, and, and see what you need. Now, I will say with the tack veins, you do have to prep them just like the Max series um, because of that, that material they're made out of. You, know, you got to use your primer pen. You don't, I use the AAE one and it worked fine. You don't have to buy the tack glue and primer pen. Um, but if you don't own any of it, you may as well get the tack glue and the tack primer pen because they were designed for this vein. Um, but anyway, hope that gives you guys a little, little insight as to what you might be needing, whether it's a hunting arrow or a target arrow. Um, I know there's a lot of people out right now, either starting to sit in the stands for whitetail or chasing elk or, you know, season's starting up, summer winding down. So good luck to all you guys hunting, um, hunt hard, stay safe. And remember precision is a decision.